In this lesson, I want to add another sound effect. Whenever the player jumps, I want there to be a sound. So in order to implement this, we have to look at Quintus underscore input.js just to understand how the platformer controllers work. Remember that when we created our player, we added the platformer controls component, and that's what allows us to control the player using the keyboard or using the uh, on-screen uh, buttons that, you, that you've seen already when we work with touch screens. Let's find where these platformer controllers are defined. So, when um, there's a few there's a few methods here. There's the added component added method, which is called when you create and when when you add this component to your um, entity. And then there's some checks for collisions and for jumping as well. So it's checking whether you you press a certain button or the app key and it'll define certain jump speed that, that we've provided when we created the player and also there's a couple of uh, events that get triggered, one of them is called jump and jumped so we, we need, you need to take a close look at this code um, if you want to understand what's going on behind the scenes uh, for what I'm, I'm going to show you next so now let's go to player.js and see how I'm listening to the event called jump because that event is triggered when you press the when you when you carry out a jump. So once once there's a jump, we want to make sure that the player is not jumping already because this get this gets called many times. So even if you are already jumping and you press the up key, it'll call the event again. So by doing this, I'm making sure that the guy is not really is not jumping at the moment. It's basically quiet on the ground that's when we want to play the sound. So when we play the sound it will define uh, an is jumping property that will be set to true so that if it's already jumping we won't play the sound again and then when the player hits hits the ground or hits whichever surface or who knows maybe a big creature that can carry it around or some vehicle there will be a bump button event trigger right that's when you fall when you hit the ground and when that happens we're no longer jumping so now we could eventually play the sound again if there's another jump event so take a quick take a take a close look at how this part works and the code that I've added here um, so that uh, that you understand how this works because otherwise you might end up with situations where um, you're jumping and then you keep on pressing the, the key to jump or the button to jump and the sound gets played many times and you don't want that. Now the last thing I wanted to add here was regarding player, the player getting damaged. When we touch an enemy uh, on, the, on the sides, I've added now that the player gets damaged. There's a method called damage. Now, what's going to happen in that method? Eventually, you could put there the code that corresponds to, say, losing a life or losing some energy and having a check as whether you still have more energy or you've reached zero, in which case there, there could be a game over screen. But so far for, for this example, what we're doing is basically restaging the level so the game starts all over again. It's our way to say that, that you got a game over screen. So, let's just make sure that that's working as we expect. Um, you are not able to listen to the sound, but I'm listening it on the headset. And if you touch one of the enemies, you see that the level is basically reset. And all that is, is that initial code in game.js that we created, that's getting um, called again. The players, um, the, the, the stage is reloaded and the viewport is uh, following the player again on its new position which comes from the TMX file. So that's, that's our simple platformer example.